On 21st June, Gujar Nala affectees were simply attending a peaceful protest, but they ended up suffering at the hands of state violence. Today, my core committee, the office, 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 The police also took buses filled with women and children into custody while they were on their way to the protest. And to make matters worse, the police also arrested three journalists. On 14th of June, a Supreme Court order directed authorities to continue the anti-encroachment operation along the Gujar and Urangi Nalas. To protest this verdict, the Karachi Bachao Tehreek and affectees called a peaceful sit-in outside Bilawal House on Monday. The purpose of this demonstration was to demand a rehabilitation plan for the 50,000 people whose homes are slated for demolition. Protesters also demanded a change in the government's plan to construct 30 feet wide roads on both sides of the nalas. During the last hearing of their case in the Supreme Court, the formulation of a comprehensive resettlement plan was emphasized. Affectees were hopeful that their protest would be registered by the Sin government. which is why they decided to hold the sit in on Benazir Bhutto's birthday roti kapra makan ka nara tha ab hukumranon ne roti bhi chhin li kapra bhi chhin liya makan bhi chhin liya to ab bachcha kya hai gareeb aadmi ke liye hamare paas khone ke liye sirf ghar tha wo aap logon ne chhin liya ab hamare paas khone ke liye kuch nahi hai almost two and a half hours later all those who were detained were released but the incident raised pressing question marks on the sin government stance on the freedom of expression and the right to peaceful protest after the incident sin's education and labor minister met with the delegation of affectees and activists from the karachi bachao tehreek he assured them that he would take up the matter of permanent rehabilitation with the chief minister of sin and the sin cabinet Will the affectees of Gujar and Urangi Nala demolitions be compensated and resettled in the near future or will the state keep trampling on their demands for basic human rights?